Welcome everyone, it's Howie Schwartz. Excited to have you guys here for another session in our Offer Vault training. If you are here live, welcome. If you're watching the replay, also welcome. And I do encourage you to join us live Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, we hope to see you here live. Some of the benefits of being live is that we will always uh, be able to answer your questions, look at your niche markets, look at your campaigns, and really just uh, be able to make it a little bit more personal than the replay. So I do uh, encourage you to try to join us live whenever you can. So again, uh, great to have everyone here who did join us live tonight. If you have questions during the session, please do type them in. Um, I would appreciate um, uh, the chance to, to review your niche markets and also to answer any questions that you may have live on the session. So let's, uh, let's get right into it. So we're going to talk tonight about our blueprints and our checklist to launch our first affiliate marketing campaigns. And whether you're just starting out or whether you're super successful, full-time super affiliate, it's still important to get back to basics and really to have a plan. So let's start at the beginning. And again, if you'd like me to make this about your niche market, please do type it in and I'd be happy to get into the specifics of your niche market also. So where do we begin? We always begin with Offer Vault. So you want to make sure that you are logged in to your account. If you have missed any of our webinars, then I do want to encourage you to make sure that you're logged in. Go to the free training tab. You can see each and every week uh, we have uh, just some great content for you. Uh, we've gotten great reviews on our five-part traffic series, so I do encourage that you watch that. If you go to page two or you know whatever uh, it may be when, when you're starting to watch this, you'll also see some really detailed um, instructions on how to get accepted by affiliate networks and some tips for that. So I do encourage that new affiliates uh, go there and and begin um, with uh, with those sessions. I think that would actually be really, really helpful for you. So let's start at the beginning. So for me, I think the most successful affiliate campaigns, and I would have to say every successful affiliate campaign that I've been involved in all starts from the planning stage. I really can't think of a time, and I've been doing this for like 20 years um, at this point, um, so for a long, long time, I really can't recall a time where things just magically came into place and things magically started converting and then like magic had just scaled and there was just no bumps in the road and, and just it, you know, it was like just, you know, checks just magically appearing. It just doesn't work like that. It requires us to have a foundation and a plan. And that's what we're going to cover tonight. And again, if you have questions, please do type them in, and we'll try to personalize this as much as uh, as we can. So the plan for me always starts <clears throat> with competitive research and niche research, and we've talked a little bit about this in some previous sessions. So tonight we're going to go through and we're going to recap some of what we've covered in some other sessions, and we're going to try to bring this together for you to come up with an action plan. So we always begin with Offer Vault. And what I like to do is, for me, I do this each morning. And you can set a time during your day or, or during your week or weekend when it makes the most sense for you. But for me, I like to start each morning and plan on what specific niches I'm going to start experimenting with and what I'm going to start researching in. And Offer Vault is a wonderful place to do this because we're able to see just so many different ideas and so many different offers, and it's always fresh and always updated. So we're going to start here like I do every morning, and I'm going to take a look at which offers are featured, which offers are, are coming up here. I'm going to see what's interesting to me. I also like to take a look at sometimes some of the trending searches. Let's keep looking here. I'm just looking for something that's going to catch my interest. 
I'm also paying attention to the countries that we're marketing in. And we've talked about this in the past, the importance of understanding the countries. And I get this question a lot. So if you're in, you know, um, South Korea and you want to promote an offer in Brazil, that's perfectly fine. It's not about where you're located. It's about where you're generating traffic for, for the conversions in that affiliate network, right? And that offer. So that's, that's the location and why this is important. So let's continue looking through here. And again, this is really actually exactly what I'm doing. As I'm going through here and seeing, you know, which offers I might be interested in, something a little different that maybe I haven't uh, thought about before. So we're going to open up a few here. So again, I, I'm just looking for new markets. So there's two ways to really approach your niche marketing, and I do both of these. Sometimes you start with an intention with a market, and you say like, I want to be involved in you know, uh, credit repair. And that's, you know, you can start there. And uh, you could also say, let me, you know, kind of be open to the universe and kind of scroll through and see what other interesting things are, are popping up here. So let's go through a little bit more. So again, I'm just going to find a few more of these. Again, I'm looking at countries. I'm looking at maybe something I haven't run before we can look at some mobile offers these are specific for mobile all right we got a few of them so let's let's start here so bef bef so this is a, a great way where we can use offer vault for what I like to call, you know, sort of this this niche or or CPA offer exploration, you know, exploration, right? So how can we go through and just start seeing maybe a niche market that we have not thought about before? So again, sometimes you might have an intention or a specific market, and you can start searching for that. And other times, I'm like, I just want to think about something new. So now we just found a few offers. So let's look through them. So this is EasyHomeInsurance.net. Click to convert. You can get a free policy quote. It's an email and a zip offer. Traffic restricted. This is important. We've talked about this on, on previous webinars. From Monday to Friday to 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. EST, so Eastern Standard Time. So this offer requires that you use day parting. So when you're setting up your traffic campaigns, you need to make sure that you're only running these weekdays, and you need to make sure that you're only running these hours, and you need to triple check the time zone. Very, very important. And if you run traffic on Saturday, if you run traffic at you know 9 p.m. Eastern after, after this offer is closed, guess what? You're not going to get compensated for it. And the reason why someone is asking, right, is all about when they either have customer support or a call center standing by for this. So they want to be able to follow up on this email and zip submit right away during these specific hours to be able to close the lead. That's why they're not accepting this traffic 24 by seven. So super, super important for us to kind of understand that. So this is, you know, sort of a classic uh, zip and email submit. So we can get home insurance from easy home insurance here. Enter your zip code, get free policy quotes, apply to see if you qualify. And again, this is a test page, so it may not work out. You know what? We're out of the, uh, as, we're, as we're saying, we're out of the time zone. That's why it's not letting you uh, do it. It's actually 9 p.m. Eastern, but you get the point. It's kind of funny. I wasn't even seeing what time it was. Okay, so this is sort of a classic um, <clears throat> zip and email submit offer. And you can start to think um, about the type of, uh, traffic, the type of content that you can develop, understand what the payout is, understand the day parting, right? So for me, every step of the way, I write everything down in either Google Sheets or Google Docs. I've talked about this on previous webinars. And the reason why I focused my attention on it is to make sure that I am tracking everything that I do. I'm tracking the creative, I'm tracking the landing pages, the networks, the type of keywords that people are using, um, the type of benefits and features that uh, marketers are, are, are encouraging on their landing pages so I can learn from it and start to develop this kind of swipe file to build my campaigns from. So 
one of the questions that we did talk about from a previous webinar is, do I have sort of this big master list of ideas or do I break out sort of this Google Sheet or Google Doc? And again, you could use Notepad, you know, whatever you want to use, but I like to have it in the cloud so that way I can always access it wherever I am at work, at home, you know, um, you know, on the train, in the car, you know, whatever. Um, so for me, I usually have a, an idea sheet where right now, since I'm doing this kind of this exploratory, let me see what Offer Vault can lead me to. Right now, I would probably put this in that kind of main sheet of ideas. And then when I want to um, flesh out and really just kind of get into a specific idea deeper, then I'm typically creating its own unique Google Sheet or Google Doc about that. Uh, specific niche market, and then I can start putting keyword research and more details in there. But usually at this stage, I'm going to have just kind of one master running list of just ideas. And that to me, I go back to from time to time just for creative inspiration and saying, all right, what should I want to test marketing or what I want to do some more research on? Let me just drink some water here. Let me see questions. So again, as you guys have questions live, please do continue to type them in. Okay, let's look at some other offers that we clicked on. So Knee Active Plus and Joints, so some sort of joint pain offer. LV, I'm actually not even sure what country that is. Dr. Cash is a global affiliate network. So, you know, so this is interesting, kind of a neutral offer in another country. So I might write this down and say, like, you know, am I interested in in marketing something like this in, in the future in some other markets? You know, I do again, I don't know if this is something that's necessarily for me and the type of campaigns that, that I do, but I do encourage that everyone kind of opens their mind to international offers, things in different countries, different languages. I found a lot of success. I know a lot of affiliates who who do very, very well with offers internationally, also off offers in additional languages, different languages and things like that. I'd say when you think about other languages, you want to make sure that you can find someone on Fiverr or Odesk or something like that who's you know, a native speaker in that language. You can help you with copy and translation and, and things like that. So I might write this down kind of for the future, but you know, I, I'd say that you know, maybe I want to look at some nutraceutical or some joint offers, maybe first in, in English to start. I typically do not run an offer in another language before I've run a similar offer, at least within that broad niche market, in my native language. And the reason why is I want to understand you know, kind of the persona of those buyers, a little bit of the demographics, because then I can apply that to, to other markets. So again, I love international campaigns. I'm thrilled in running in other languages. I would probably first, for me, at least in my experience, I'd probably run something like this similar in English. So let, let's do that. So let's look at joint pain. Let, let's see. So we're going to go back to trusty offer vault. even anything comes up in joint pain. So again, what's interesting here is this just led me to a new market, right, that I haven't thought of before. And I found another language and I'm writing it down and I'm like, you know, for me, maybe I want to start this in my native language and then maybe expand. So Ostia Life, let's take a look here. There we go. And then we see some other ones in different languages too, different countries. And again, that's great. I do not want to discourage you from running in other languages and other, other countries at all. It's just my advice is just pick first in kind of your, your native language. I just think is a little bit easier to start. So this is also in another language. See if we can find something that I can read tonight. There we go. Got one here. So health CPA. Let's see joint pain. So I'm going to write this down. I'm going to apply for Terra Leads. We're going to talk about that in a second. Pain active. Excellent. So here's something that to me is really important. And I mentioned this on a recent webinar. Someone might have wanted me to look at it. I want to say it was like the homework or kind of study niche. And I only found one offer. And if that's a niche market that you're an expert in and want to focus on, that's perfectly fine. And that can work for you. But I typically do not suggest that 
marketers run in niches where there's only one offer. I like to see a high offer density. I like to see variety in offers and also a variety of networks. That to me allows me to diversify. I don't have to put my eggs in all in one basket and I can really kind of split test offers and kind of build a list if that makes sense in your niche. And I always think it makes sense in pretty much every niche. And we even did a full webinar on, on list building. You can watch the, the replay. But you know, for me, I always like to have multiple networks and, and multiple offers. So this this here, when we talk about joint pain, it looks like there's enough offers in, in the US and English and then also international opportunities that I would encourage you to review, but I always like to test in my native languages first. So I'm writing this this down here in my knit in my uh in my sort of general um, you know, niche document that I keep, and then I might start to expand on this, which we're gonna we're gonna talk about next. And again, we'll pick one of these to expand on. All right, let me see if there's any other specific niche markets. So David's saying arthritis. So yes, so um <clears throat> Can everyone see my screen? We had a member who just said they see a blank screen. I want to make sure if you guys can just type, you can see my screen. Looks good here, but I just want to make sure that everyone can see my screen okay. Looks good. Great. So, yeah, if anyone's having any technical difficulties, definitely uh, type and, and let me know. But it uh, looks like everyone can see my screen, which is great. Sorry, now I just saw a question. Oh, so David's saying arthritis. So yes, that that's a that's a great point. So let's let's start kind of digging in, kind of in that in that theme. So we're gonna go to Trusty Google and Happy Halloween to everyone watching this live. So as we start to get into to joint pain. And we're going to definitely start to see other niche markets like arthritis and things like that that are related is this is how we start the foundation of our keyword and our niche research. So what we did is we started with an offer vault. We went through this process of looking for some new offers that we haven't run before and kind of hone into one and say, all right, I'm going to learn more about this market. And now we're working in our specific Google Doc, Google Sheet for this specific market, right? And really kind of pushing forward and learning exactly um, you know, all the steps that we're going to need that we're going to lay out tonight. So uh, first things first, actually, sorry. Is, uh, let's just take one step back to, to offer all is you're going to want to make sure you're joining all of these networks. So you're going to go through here and we're going to join the network. We're going to join a network. As I mentioned, one of the homework assignments that I give after every webinar is to make sure that you're applying to 10 brand new networks each and every week. It's just super important that you always have new networks and it opens up to you, you to new affiliate managers, new offers to run, new monetization ideas. So to me, always find 10 new networks to apply to every week. Make sure you're using the offer vault link so they know where that you, they know where you came from. And then in this case, since we're looking at a specific market, I'm going to go through and I'm going to find joint pain. You know, David suggested if we move up, you know, kind of the, the niche market to things like, you know, arthritis. And I'm going to want to make sure that um, – if I spelt that right, um, I'm going to want to make sure that we're applying for all of these uh, all of these uh, niche markets, and I'm sorry, apply for all of the affiliate networks within this niche market. So I'm reading multiple questions as I'm uh, as I'm typing here. So I always the question is when do I apply to to the affiliate network? So I apply to the affiliate networks kind of as I'm doing my research. And again, please do watch. You know, kind of, uh, it was about a month or so ago where we hosted a webinar and it's labeled uh, back in August of 2018 on how to apply to affiliate networks. So I do encourage you to watch that if you haven't seen it. So we can click right here and we can start to join any of these networks directly. So you either can go to the offer detail page or you can click directly within OfferVault on the network link, and you can sign up and apply for all of these uh, networks directly. Okay, good. Let's hop back into Google. So what I do is I always start by using Google Suggest or Google Autocomplete to really kind of dig into the, my niche market. So I'm writing all of these down, and I'm starting to see that things that at night, 
that's kind of interesting, in fingers, in thumb, swelling, supplements. Let's go into, into fingers and maybe in, in thumb. And the reason why we're doing this, we also talked about this in, in our traffic webinar, is I'd like to really get into the long tail of our niche market. So the long tail is where it's a, a sort of a, a, a deeper point in the funnel. When someone's just starting by typing in joint pain, it's kind of generic. You don't know what they're doing or what they're interested in. Maybe they're doing research for school. Who knows? When someone starts saying like joint pain at night, joint pain in thumb or in finger, this is specific. This is really kind of down the funnel where that you know, they have a specific problem that they're trying to solve. And that's where we make money in our online marketing. We profit when we solve people's problems online. That's what this is all about. So that's why I am um, a really big fan of understanding how do we start to get down into the long tail. So if we go back here to joint pain, right? We see 338 million results. We could put this in quotes. This, this, and I actually write this down in my Google Sheet to get a feel for you know kind of how competitive this niche market is. You know, 22 million results. Mayo Clinic, WebMD, right? Health.com, Medicine Net, right? Merck, Medline Gov, Health24. These are really, really authoritative sites. This is going to be very difficult to rank on page one of Google for such a you know, sort of um, uh, kind of broad term like joint pain. Same thing when we start to look and think about AdWords within this market. You know, when you look at, you know, the broader market, one, they're typically going to be more expensive many times. And not only is it going to often be more expensive to run campaigns, you're also going to find that it's not going to convert as well. Because again, it's so generic. Joint pain could mean any sort of ailment, right? So now what we're going to do here is we're going to drill down. And we're going from you know, hundreds of million res of, of results to 34 million and 69,000. So all of a sudden, we can start to think about ranking here. So you have a site called the Himalayan Times, Community.Fitbit, Phoenix Rising, Tendonitis Expert, Outdoors.Stack Exchange. Kind of interesting. Or that would make sense. Programmers with Corporal Tunnel. Right? So when we start to look here, right, these sites are still could be authoritative, but they're not at the level of what we saw for just the generic market within joint pain. That's why it's so important for us to start to drill down. Everyday health, Merck manual. So, okay, so joint pain in fingers. Now for the fun of it, I saw joint pain in thumb. But first, let's scroll down. I love kind of searches related to. So I'm writing this down. So pain in finger joint when pressed. Finger joint pain treatment, middle finger joint pain. So look how specific middle finger, index finger, finger joint pain, no swelling, sun and joint pain, middle finger pain, middle finger joint pain. So people, um, I was going to make a joke, people are giving people their, their finger too much. They're New Yorkers like me, and that's why their middle finger hurts. But um, if you're not in New York, you don't get it. It's okay. <laughs> so what what I'm fascinated by here is is really how can we get into the long tail here. So now all of a sudden we can start thinking about the campaigns that we can run that are so specific. So someone who's who's searching for joint pain in the middle finger, if we can tune our ad creative, we can tune our, our offer and our copy related to that, we, we can start to, to really find an audience that is very, very targeted and really what I like to call in that kind of buying set of the, the funnel. I mean, they have a, they have specifically a pain in this case, and this is something that we can solve, right, with our marketing, and that's how we profit online. So when I look at something like that, this is really interesting. Now we can talk about middle finger, index finger, thumb, and start to go down for these really specific items, right? And we can start to run um, either AdWords or Facebook ads around these very specific niche markets. We can start developing out content. We can do article marketing, press release. And we're going to talk more about um, organic content um, you know, on, a, on a future session. But when we think about, um, when we think about um, what we can start to, to do within this market and start to realize that, you know, hey, there's five different fingers and to develop content and, and uh, to get just kind of really further into the, into the funnel, further into 
um, that long tail, this starts to really work. So um, this is not a market that I that I've played, and I, I played with more generic kind of arthritis stuff, but I've never kind of you know thought about this you know um, with kind of finger specific pain and individual fingers and things like that. That to me starts to make um, you know a lot of sense and gets pretty exciting actually. Um, all right, let me see any other under questions here. So this to me is, is, is a market that, you know, again, I haven't really thought of that in just, you know, just 20 minutes or so we're able to dig into, to start with offer vault and then kind of do our research within Google. And now we're coming up with ideas for, for content. Uh, we're able to apply to all of these affiliate networks, right. And we're able to, to, you know, really make sense of how can we compete? Right, because if you just start with arthritis or just start with joint pain, it's just too broad. You know, the reality is you're never going to be able to 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 rank for those generic terms, right? And you know, advertising is going to be typically very expensive. But if we can start to target and micro-target and get more specific, you're going to find that it's not only more cost-effective from a paid advertising standpoint. You're going to find with organic traffic, it's going to be much, much easier to rank with SEO. And you're also going to find your conversion rates are going to be higher because you're specifically solving the specific pain of your prospects, right? So that to me is sort of the, the holy grail when we can get all of those elements kind of lined up. And again, I'm writing this all down. I actually like this market. I'm going to, I'm going to start playing with this. All right, let me, uh, let me see questions here. So bear with me for a second. Um, let's see here. So David's saying lots of supplement offers on ClickBank. So yes, so um, you can definitely, as an affiliate, promote with uh, with ClickBank. Um, it's a, another great uh, affiliate network to work with. So how do you know which affiliate network is a good one? Well, all of the affiliate networks that we list on on OfferVault. We have a relationship with, right? And uh, they've been uh, the, ma the majority of these have actually worked with us at Offer Vault for many, many years, right? So that's the first thing is you know stick with affiliate networks from Offer Vault, right? And the key is not just the affiliate network is to understand the relationship you're going to build with your affiliate manager, and also uh, the specific offers that that you're running. So that that's really my advice is is just kind of stick to your Offer Vault networks, and then you're good. So David's saying back pain is big. So yeah, back pain is is definitely a big market. But what I would say is that it's going to be more competitive, right? And it's broader. I really like to get more specific. Now we're talking about like, you know, joint pain of the middle finger, joint pain of the index finger, joint pain pain in the pinky and the thumb. Like that to me is sort of the the the, the holy grail of like long tail marketing, right? And lots of offers to to back it up. So the offer doesn't have to be like you know how to fix you know the, your pain in your middle finger or anything like that. You could use your joint pain you know offer and just tailor your kind of pre marketing, tailor your 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 content and the way that you're pitching and your advertising about you know more specific joint pain and even down to the individual finger level, which to me is just kind of fascinating. So let's see here. Um, <clears throat> sorry, just looking through questions here. All right, great. So let's uh, let's do this step by step in one more market. Great. So sorry, I'm just reading everyone's questions. I think everyone's on the same page, which is awesome. All right, let's. Uh, Let's do this one more time. Let me just close up some of these windows. Make it a little bit easier for me. Oops, I closed off from Vault. It's not my intention. <laughs> Never close off from Vault. Mark will get mad at me. <laughs> okay. Let's do this one more time. And again, please continue typing in, in questions. It's It's great to... So I'm just reading some questions here. It's great to see so many people participate live. And I think everyone's getting, again, the, my point on the importance of the, the long tail. So here's a trick. I'm going to go into Offer Vault. And I'm just going to start hopping around some pages. 
I'm going to look at 50 offers on the ninth page. So again, if you don't know what to promote or you're looking for something new, this is exactly what, what I do. And I'm going to give you another great, great tip right after this. So let's take a look here. Looking for something that just gets my, uh, my attention. Nothing new there. And again, I'm just looking for something new in a market that I maybe haven't run before. So again, I've run in a lot of these markets or, or you know, maybe it's something that I'm just not you know, interested in right now. Identity IQ, that's interesting. Try that. Sale $40, let's see. Credit score all three bureaus plus identity theft protection. This is really interesting. So this is you know a market that <clears throat> makes a lot of sense in, in the US. Um, I do not know you know kind of how this works internationally just because I'm just not aware of it. So um, there is definitely certain campaigns that work in in a country because it's an offer that that makes sense or an offer that's available that maybe does not work in internationally, right? So let's uh, let's take a look at this from from the US market. Let's see identity theft. So this is the, the first part of the market. Again, this is going to be obviously super competitive. So we're going to try to find sort of this long tail angle. So again, I'm using Offer Vault to find a new market, right? And then when I find an offer of interest, I go and I'll type in kind of the, the root of that keyword phrase or that offer. My clean ID. Let's take a look at some of this. LifeLock. LifeLock is a is a pretty strong brand here in the states. Again, there there's enough offers here to work with. To me, someone asked the question is you know like kind of what's the minimum number of offers or results that I would consider working with? Um, I'd like to see at least a half a dozen. And a minimum of two networks, three is kind of, to me, is, is kind of the minimum. So right here, you know, we definitely have more than six, and I have more than three different networks to work with, too. So that, to me, is definitely um, broad enough. So we just looked at this one before. We looked, again, this is the same offer. My clean ID. Yeah, it's definitely enough stuff to, to run here which is good. My clean ID. Here's LifeLock. And again, LifeLock is a strong brand. So this is actually something to, that's interesting to, to talk about. So I often like to run and like to test a branded offer. So what do I mean by a branded offer? So in identity theft, LifeLock is, is pretty well known in the U.S. They spend a, a fortune on, on marketing. It's, it's more of a, a recognized brand. In weight loss, um, there's offers for things like you know, Jenny Craig or, or Weight Watchers or South Beach, South Beach Diet, things like that because those are, those are brand names. And what happens is you're actually solving for a lot of um, the, the questions that and your prospect may have about, you know, is my information safe? Is, is this, you know, a good company to do business with? And then, um, you know, what I like to, to think is, um, what I like to think of is that when you're working with an established and a known brand, is it starts to lend some of the credibility of the brand, you know, is kind of this halo effect over to your marketing, right? So that's some of the advantages of often starting with a LifeLock or, you know, in another niche, like a Weight Watchers or something like that. So that does not mean, because it's a question that I stick to that. So, and the reason why is often that you'll find you're going to see better payouts 
and sometimes some more interesting sort of offers on paper call and things like that with sort of this, you know, non-branded offers, right? So you'll find that a lot of times the landing pages might be more creative or they might have additional assets for you to run as far as banner copy and things like that. Um, you also may run into um, limitations in marketing where most of the time they won't let you run for that keyword. So you can't run for keyword like LifeLock or anything like that. So they'll have more restrictions, typically a non-branded campaign. So like, you know, more this, um, you know, my clean ID or, or, you know, identity IQ, they're typically going to have less restrictions on your marketing than a branded one. So that's kind of my only negative points. Well, let me drink some water. Probably my only negative point on um, on uh, on running branded offers is sometimes it's going to be a little bit more restrictive in, in your marketing and, and some limitations. So this is uh, and this is a, a market that I like to call a rich niche, which means that there's money in this. That's why we typically you know don't do things like underwater basket weaving because there's no money in it. Um, so let's take a look at this. And again, I'm going to want to understand in, in Google you know, how do we get down. into the long tail. So I can tell you right now, um, you know, identity theft as, you know, sort of this broad term is going to be one, you know, impossible to rank for in, on page one of Google. Number two, these keywords here in this marketing is going to be super expensive. So let's start to get into the long tail. Interesting. I guess there was a movie. So I'm not seeing here anything that I like yet prevention what to do report examples facts Let's see prevention see if we can find something a little bit even more long tail in this this is one of those markets that can be super profitable but you really need to find that long tail niche to work with here online Again, I'm just using these Google tools here, like autocomplete. When shopping. Also using searches related to. Protect yourself from identity theft online. Again, I want to get a little bit deeper in here. I also really like people also ask. I'm writing this down in in my niche sort of playbook in that um, in that Google Sheet or Google Doc. I'm writing this all down. Ah, there we go. Let's see. This could be interesting. Oh, you know what? Business identity theft. So I just wrote down how to spot uh, scams online. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in my Google Sheet. This is maybe an interesting idea. Identity theft for your business. Hmm. So I'm gonna write this down. I I think one of the challenges would be is that these offers are most likely for consumers. So this may not work to mon. I'm gonna write this down and see if I can find an affiliate program to, to work with on this because that's kind of interesting. We think about it from a from a business standpoint, but may not work with what we're running if it's for if it's for individuals, right? Let's see. So what we saw before is so now we can start to go in here how to spot scams online, and we can start to develop content like seven steps protect yourself you have a romance scammer i don't know what that is identity theft let's see there we go so now we can start to really drill in here and start to write 
content about, you know, here's 10 tips on how to find scams online and how to report them. And here's how you protect your identity. So this is sort of really the, this path that we go through. And in some ways it's kind of like a rabbit hole or like, you know, looking in, in, in a, in a house of mirrors, right? A hall of mirrors, because it's just, you know, you wind up just going deeper and deeper and deeper. And that's really the point here is we really want to be able to to get into these ideas for these for this content to develop, you know, and how to write, you know, creative copy, how to solve people's on, you know, people's problems online. And the deeper that we go, what you'll find is that again, the less competition you'll have from an SEO perspective, and also, um, you know, the 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 more profitable it'll typically be because the further down the long tail, you're going to usually see more engaged prospects, people who are just willing to take action, willing to buy, you know, they're further down the, the funnel. Okay, good. Let me see any other questions. Um, awesome. So let me give you one more tip tonight. And this is outside of Offer Vault, and then how we take it into Offer Vault. <laughs> so I'm a little old school because I'm, I'm old. So I still go to bookstores. I, I know many people like, what's a bookstore, right? So hopefully there's still a bookstore in your town. Um, I'm always afraid the bookstore in my town is going to close and I'll go like protest or something because I love it. Um, I walk around and look for book topics. I look at what they're featuring. And I always walk through the magazine aisles. Magazines are just an awesome way to come up with new niche markets because there's magazines for everything like RC planes and ice climbing and you know para you know uh, parasailing i mean all sorts of really interesting magazines so i find that walking through a bookstore is just a great way and a great idea to find kind of these new niche markets and then i take that back into offer vault and then i start to to think about um you know other things that that people might be you know interested in from there and then you know what what ways we can you know, kind of, you know, solve those problems. So when you see something like, you know, windsurfing, right, or something like parasailing, you know, adventure sports outdoors, right? So this is people are going to have to travel in general, right? You know, usually, you know, unless you're really lucky, you might not live in a spot where you could windsurf every day or parasail every day or surf every day, right? So a lot of times, you know, people are going to be traveling. So for me, I'm not only thinking about you know, that I'm going to, you know, find a surfing offer because it's typically not going to be one. I'm looking at like what services, what problems can I solve for someone who's interested in that? So someone who's interested in, in surfing um, or you know, rock climbing or something like that, they tend to travel often. So all of a sudden we can start to think about travel insurance offers. So it doesn't have to be, you know, that exact um, market where you have to try to find something in surfing or, or rock climbing or, or, you know, whatever it might be. It could be that you can find, you know, um, travel, whether it's travel booking or travel insurance. Like that to me is, is, is a great way to start to monetize niche markets that you can discover, especially if you have something that you're passionate about, you can develop some content on. So that's kind of how we tie the real world together with Offer Vault. And this to me is, is just a, just a, great exercise. And if you do this every day, just either look in a bookstore or, or on TV or something for an idea and then find a complimentary offer on OfferVault, apply for those networks, write all of this down in, in your Google Sheets and in Google Docs, and then use OfferVault for you know discovery of new markets in the way that we did it tonight. And then just take action. So I like to do this process. Um, you know, Each morning, I'll go through it. And then um, a minimum of once a week, I launch a new market or, or, or every day I'm focusing on uh, you know, my existing market. So you don't want to just spend your life researching, right? You can do this every day, but guess what? It's not going to make you any money. What's going to make money for you as an affiliate marketer is doing this research, laying the groundwork. Watching then next, the, you know, the traffic video series that we've done before in Off Vault. And then the main thing is taking action. So until you take action, um, then all this stuff is just academic. So dig deep, get into the long tail. That's where the profits are. And take notes on everything that you do. So thanks again, everyone. This is Howie Schwartz for Offer Vault. I encourage you again every week to go to our networks tab and to apply for 10 new networks that you have not applied for before. Keep notes on everything. Take massive action and look forward to seeing you live on our webinar. See you next week. Have a great night.